All right, two white dudes from Idaho talking about gods and guns. What a shocker. Uh, I, I do uh, disagree with almost everything that Pastor Wilson said, but I would rather dig deeper and look at some underlying things that are kind of brewing underneath our skin. And you have to know that I'm a very unlikely candidate to be talking about the topic that I'm talking about today. I was raised in a very pro-gun, pro-war, pro-violent context. I mean, it, it's, it's amazing how these cultural values just seem to seep down through your skin into your bloodstream. I remember growing up as a kid and I hated Germans. I was born, you know, 30 years after World War II, but I just hated Germans until somebody introduced me to the Cold War, got me up to speed, so I started hating Russians. And I, I, nobody sat me down and said, you need to hate this, you need to hate that. There's just these cultural values that you just absorb, and it's hard to identify where they come from. I remember watching, you know, Rocky Balboa beat the crap out of Ivan Drago, and I was so excited, and I was almost dis disappointed that at the end of Rocky IV, there was a moment of reconciliation. Why do we need rec reconciliation? He won the, fo the fight. In 1991, I remember cheering with all my might during Desert Storm. I was so excited to be part of a war. After 9-11 hit, my reaction was, let's just nuke the entire Middle East. Sure, there'll be collateral damage, but that's the price you have to pay. After all, the only way to stop a bad guy with a bomb is a what? Good guy with a bomb. The thought, <laughs> the thought that you can be a Christian and actually advocate for nonviolence was absurd to me. Nonviolence is just for the, the, the pacifists and the pansies and the tree-hugging liberals that couldn't win a fight anyway. But then I started to really reflect on the counterintuitive teachings of Jesus Christ. And I was rocked and confronted. I want to say two things over the next few minutes. Number one, nonviolence should be the dominant rhythm of Christianity. And number two, it's not. It's not. Uh, Nonviolence is obviously rooted in the teaching and life of Jesus Christ, a person almost surprisingly left out of the previous talk. But Jesus commanded us to love our enemies, to do good to those who persecute us, to bless those who curse us, to not respond violently to evil. And in his life, his nonviolent journey to the cross, he was, he was uh, punched and slapped and spit upon and had his head pounded with a stick. He was crucified. He was scourged. And he left behind a model for us to follow. You see, some people say, yeah, Jesus, he had to be nonviolent because he had to go get crucified and atone for the sin of the world. You see, Jesus' nonviolence wasn't ethical. It was only theological. The only problem with that is that the Bible says it is both ethical and theological. First Peter 2 is very clear that Jesus' nonviolent journey to the cross is something that all followers of Jesus should claim for themselves. I'm most struck by the early church, the first 300 years of Christianity, the pre-Constantine church. The question of whether or not a believer in Jesus should ever kill another human being, this question came up a lot in the first 300 years of Christianity. And according to every single early Christian theologian who addressed that question, the answer was an unambiguous no. When it comes to killing another person, Christians should never kill. Here's what's fascinating is the early church, they couldn't agree on hardly anything. They couldn't even agree on which books should be in the Bible. But when it came to whether or not a Christian should kill, the Christian leaders who addressed this question, they all said no. You know what the most popular verse in the early church was? This, you, know, you know what the John 3.16 of pre-Constantine Christianity was? Love your enemies. Ten different authors and 28 different passages in the first 300 years of Christianity celebrated Jesus' command to love your enemies. You know, growing up, whenever I heard the command, love your enemies, I always heard, the next word I heard after that was, but. The early Christians said, okay.
Nonviolence is clearly the dominant rhythm of New Testament Christianity. Fast forward 2,000 years, and we clearly, as Americans, live in a militaristic culture. And this is not really up for, this is not up for debate. This is just the way it is. We live in a highly, a profoundly militaristic culture. I don't know if you remember the uh, political poll that was taken a few months ago. And um, on that poll, one of the questions was, should we bomb Agrabah? And eight, uh, no, 30% of Republicans said, yes, I, I, I think we should, I think we should, we should go bomb Agrabah. And 19% of Democrats said, uh, yeah, I think, I think bombing Agrabah would, would yeah, I think that would be a, a good move. And those of you who are <laughs> laughing know that Agrabah is a fictional city in a cartoon. We live in a culture where we are ready to bomb a city because it has an Arab sounding name. Where my heart aches is that the evangelical church, the evangelical church has not been very different. Andrew Bosovich is a world-renowned military historian, and he's done more research on militarism in America than anybody else. And in his work, he says, and I quote, were it not for the support offered by several tens of millions of evangelicals, militarism in this country becomes inconceivable. Around the same time as the Agrabah poll came out, uh, one of the most influential and powerful Christian leaders, I think he is the leader of the largest Christian organization in the history of mankind, I think. And he told his students that they should arm themselves with guns so that they can kill those Muslims before they come kill us. This militarism has seeped down into our evangelical bones. You see, one of the underlying problems of gun violence, not to reduce it to some simple statement, but one of the underlying problems of gun violence is that we celebrate on a national level, and yet we mourn it on an individual level. We celebrate destroying our enemies. And when I, when I say we, I mean evangelicals and non-Christians. We Americans, without distinction, we celebrate destroying our enemy on a national level. And then when it trickles down to some idiot with a gun, we mourn it. The biggest problem is that the evangelical church has lost its prophetic voice in this discussion. I have to wonder, no, I suggest that the values of New Testament, no, sorry, the values of American Christianity has been more shaped by our militaristic destroy your enemy spirit than the radical life and counterintuitive teaching of Jesus Christ. Because as Christians, when we love our enemies, we no longer have any more enemies. We are left only with neighbors. Thank you.